All right, let's talk about rheumatoid arthritis, the pathogenesis of it. So, big caveat of this, uh, we are not sure exactly how this uh, disease happens, but here are the theories. So, the one theory is the initiation of rheumatoid arthritis. We know there's a genetic predisposition because of identical twins and first degree relatives that have the, there, it's more likely to get it if you're a first degree relative of someone that has it. So there we know that there's some genetic predisposition. And then the initiating agent or agents. So this is kind of where we're not sure at. So one of the proposed mechanisms is that CD4 helper T cells, they respond to an arthro arthritogenic agent. So some kind of agent or some kind of component that's in your joint. Arthro is joint. So some kind of joint component or a protein. So some kind of joint component or a protein and that kind of triggers these CD4 helper T cells. Um, it can possibly be microbial, we'll talk about that later, or some kind of self-antigen. So what happens is that once these CD4 cells get triggered, they produce cytokines. Remember that cytokines are messenger, they're messenger molecules. That's all cytokines are, is they're messenger molecules. They're a way for cells to communicate with other cells. And so what happens is that these uh, cytokines, they activate macrophages, macrophages and other cells um, that are in the joint space. And they release these cells once they come to the, the joint. They release degradative enzymes and other factors that perpetuate inflammation, that just make inflammation you know, happening over and over and over. So, and then another thing that these cytokines do is that they activate B cells. And remember what B cells do, they turn into plasma cells and then the plasma cells secrete antibodies. So B cell to plasma cell, which then you get antibodies. And so these antibodies, some of which are directed against the self-antigen in the joint, some kind of joint component or protein. And so these antibodies, you know, once they are bind to this uh, arthrogenic agent or some, some kind of protein that's in the joint, then they might actually bind to the joint or embed themselves in the joint. So the rheumatoid synovium, the synovial membrane, <clears throat> if you don't know what the synovial membrane is, watch that last video and we discussed that. The synovial part of the joint is both rich in lymphocyte and macrophage-derived cytokines. They kind of know that from histology studies. And some of the cytokines are tumor necrosis factor, of course. Tumor necrosis factor promotes leukocyte recruitment. So tumor, uh, tumor necro necrosis factor is that messenger molecule from the CD4 T cells that say, hey, you know, leukocytes, white blood cells, I need you guys to come over here and clean up this mess. So we know that tumor necrosis factor plays a pivotal role because of the effectiveness of TNF antagonist drugs. There's drugs that will kind of take out tumor necrosis factor and it's a really good treatment for individuals with rheumatoid arthritis, more so than the other uh, treatments. And some of the other treatments that have failed, they still have found an overriding effectiveness in these tumor necrosis, tumor necrosis factor antagonist drugs. So interleukin-1, what that cytokine does is causes proliferation of synovial cells and fibroblasts. So these CD4 molecules secrete interleukin-1, Interleukin-1 is this messenger molecule that tells the synovial cells and these fibroblasts, hey, I need you guys to start, you know, uh, reproducing and splitting, you know, undergoing 
replication and so you can see proliferation of these synovial cells and fibroblasts. Other cytokines activate macrophages and they stimulate uh, stimulate secretion by synovial cells and chondrocytes of proteolytic and matrix degrading enzymes. So these other macrophages not only or these other cytokines not only activate macrophages but they also stimulate the secretion of the secretion by synovial cells and chondrocytes that uh, have these enzymes that are proteolytic and matrix degrading which then causes um, the osteopenia osteopenia or the juxta 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 articular sorry it's really hard to write on this tablet here but so the juxta articular osteopenia is thought to be because of you know these proteolytic and matrix degrading enzymes the activated T cells they um, secrete a large amount of the cytokine that's called RANK. RANK. R-A-N-K. And what that RANK does, it, in, it induces osteoclast differenti differentiation and activation. So this is, could be another factor into this oste osteopenic degradation of the bone that we see in the uh, x-rays. That rank ligand induces that osteoclast differentiation and activation, and those activated T cells are the ones that secrete a large amount of that. So let's talk about a picture here. Take this picture from Robin's Basic Pathology, 8th edition. And so what we assume is that there's some kind of antigen, microbe, some kind of trigger here, and it has the major histability class 2 on it so it's the some kind of this is some kind of APC antigen presenting cell it 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 gobbles up some kind of microbe some kind of antigen displays that to the CD4 T cells the CD4 positive or CD4 plus T cells then secrete cytokines the cytokines that we just talked about this pathway we're going to hold off for a bit because we're going to talk about this in a minute but the cytokines, tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-1, which then cause fibroblasts, chondrocytes, synovial cells. They release collagenase, you know, these other kind of proteins. And then you get panis formation, destruction of bone, cartilage, fibrous ankylosis, everything that we talked about in the last video. Another thing, they call, another thing that these cytokines c cause is the endothelial activation, which, it, which is, causes the expression of adhesion molecules. If you look at leukocyte recruitment and activation videos, um, I think on the, pl uh, the playlist about uh, video 20, it talks, about, it talks about how that happens, but then you have endothelial activation, which accumulates accumulation of more inflammatory cells which then secrete you know PGE2 which then causes you know so there's several ways by which you know they get these feedback loops and everything going on ultimately it leads to panis formation destruction of bone cartilage uh, fibrosis and ankylosis okay now we're going to talk about this B cell pathway so kind of an overview of the B cell activation B cells get activated there's there's a formation of rheumatoid factor or other antibodies then this immune complex uh, this immune complex type 3 hypersensitivity disease or pathway happens. You have a formation and deposition. Then you have joint injury, which leads to that panis formation. So rheumatoid factor, this is what rheumatoid factor is. If you've heard of RF, you can run a blood test, say, even if the patient has RF. What that means is, well, first of all, 80% of patients have this RF that have rheumatoid arthritis. So Rheumatoid arthritis, you know, if you did 10 patients, if you tested 10 patients, 10 patients tested, 8 would equals positive for RF. The crazy thing is, is 2 people would be negative for RF. So for rheumatoid arthritis, it's a good test to, to run to see if the patient has uh, R, you know, RA to see if they have rheumatoid factor. If you're not sure if the rheumatoid arthritis is in question for a disease, you run rheumatoid factor, it comes back positive, boom, he has RA. If not, you know, they might still have it, they might not. I don't know the sensitivity or specificity of the RF blood test. But nonetheless, 80% of patients have 
uh, rheumatoid factor. And what it is, is there's a serum IgM an antibody, and less frequently the IgG, but they're autoantibodies that bind to the FC portion of their own IgG. So let me just break that down. If you remember, this is an antibody. This is an antibody. This is what it looks like. There's an FB region, which is the top part. And then there's the FC region. Right here is the binding site. This is binding site. So what happens is, you know, I come down here. This is an this is an auto auto. This is an antibody. Right here is an I is the, the binding site. So right here, this would be an IgM. IgM of U. Well, for some reason, this would be an IgG antibody. Your own IgM antibodies attach to your own IgG antibodies. And so that's problematic because this in and of itself is uh, what they call an immune complex and then this complex embeds embeds in joints and other areas of the body it can embed in other areas of your body too but primarily in joints so this this com this uh, immune complex is this is problematic so usually an antigen usually you know just a, a normal antigen antigen would bind to the binding site of your antibodies but this IgM antibody and sometimes the IgG will bind to another or your own IgG self and that is what is this immune complex that embeds itself in joints and then that causes the destruction of the joints. One last thing is the infectious agents we might, you know, there are some theories or some evidence to show that maybe it's an infectious agent that's causing these uh, destruction of uh, our rheumatoid arthritis. These antigens may activate T or B cells, and the infectious agents uh, that are presumed are EBV, Borrelia species, Mycoplasma species, parvoviruses, and Mycobacteria.